Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. We're also gonna launch another set of NFTs tomorrow, so if you wanna check that out, make sure you follow along on the channel and we'll, we'll announce it on Twitter. And, and on YouTube. Let's go ahead and jump in. So logarithmic regression, as I've said before, in my opinion, is, is probably the best way to model the valuation of, of, you know, of a lot of cryptocurrencies and especially the blue chips. And as you guys know, I would, I would very much strongly consider Bitcoin and Ethereum to be the blue chips, not just Bitcoin. You know, I, I think that the, to, to say that the asset class is only large enough for Bitcoin is, is too short-sighted and and not the, the the best way to approach this and so ethereum i do think holds blue chip status with with bitcoin now i like talking about logarithmic regression because it does a good job of modeling more or less the intrinsic behavior of price action for for projects like ethereum and the reason is because logarithmic regression shows it, it, it sort of shows where earlier in a project's life, it can move up a lot quicker, but that as time goes on, that growth does tend to slow down. Now, one of the things that we've, we've spoken about are these logarithmic regression rainbows, where you not only have, say, a single set of regression lines, um, for instance, if we were to go over here to the Ethereum chart on, on TradingView and, and look, at, look at this, what I'm referring to is, you know, there's the there's the Ethereum logarithmic regression fit to quote unquote non-bubble data. That gives you the opportunity to have like an accumulation of phase of a lifetime whenever it occurs, right? We have no idea when they will occur. It's just that when they do occur, it, it typically leads to an accumulation phase of a lifetime. The same thing could be said, by the way, for Bitcoin, right? Whenever we're in the lower regression band, it yields the accumulation phase of a lifetime. You go over and look at this thing for Ethereum, and we can spend significant amounts of time where we are outside of this regression band. And so what we can do is we can basically just, just translate these logarithmic regression lines. And when we do that, we get something that looks like this. We get this rainbow, okay? And it's the same thing. It's the same thing that I'm showing here in this chart. Now, what's interesting about this chart, and, and I was actually looking at this recently, and we, we've spoken about it before as well, the price of Ethereum has basically been in the same regression band for basically for the last 13 months. It's kind of crazy to think about. Now, back when we, we, were, we first entered into this regression band, you know, we, we sort of speculated that we would likely see some type of a local top at three to $4,000 followed by a year-long reaccumulation phase. Okay, a year long. Now, what's interesting is we've already surpassed a year, so you could argue that if anything, I, I, it was an underestimate. But one of, the, one of the interesting things about this chart is that if you zoom in on it, if you basically just said, and, and you just sort of you know, had, had, a, had a stance on Ethereum that you were going to accumulate it, you know, anyone who's been accumulating Ether, when it, whenever it comes down to the, to the Low to this regression band right here, that historically has been a, a very good time. Okay. And the reason I'm I'm saying this is because we're actually close to the bottom again. And we've recently bounced off of it some and we've had wicks below it, but we are back towards the bottom of that regression band. And for us to get back to the top, which by the way, we've we've moved above the top a couple of times, as you can see, for us to get back up to it, the, the valuation of ETH would actually have to go to five thousand dollars. So Let's follow along and see if, if Ethereum has the ability to get back up to these levels. This is something we've, we've mentioned a few times and that Ethereum seems like it's in some type of long reaccumulation window. I, you know, I, I don't want to be deterministic about anything while I, I would like to think that the price of Ethereum is going to trend higher and, and, and ultimately move up. You do know that the downside risk does remain and we've covered the downside risk extensively. You know, I, I think we've done a good job of talking about that on the channel, but I, I always want people to sort of remain remain cognizant of the fact that the downside risk remains. And then l looking at these regression bands, one of the things I, I've mentioned before is that, you know, historically, 
I, I think you know, I think one thing that people tend to do is they, they look at prior runs and assume that Ethereum is going to make it to the higher regression bands. Like, I, I don't think Ethereum is ever going to make it to this regression band, which already ranges from 17K to 28K. Now, a natural question that follows that statement is, well, Ben, are you saying that Ethereum is never going to hit? Is it, is it really never going to hit $17,000? I do think Ethereum will eventually hit $17,000. But the problem is that it's probably never going to reach this regression ban because by the time Ethereum gets to 17K, however however long that takes, this regression ban will, will probably be at, at, at much higher valuations. Okay, so when looking at, at logarithmic regression rainbows for, for something like Ethereum, you have to remember you know, that we're likely not going to make it to the prior regression ban that we, once, that we made it to once upon a time. So I would say this one's off the table. You might even claim that this one's off the table, and I kind of think it is, to be completely honest. Um, I think that we can certainly go into the purple one, and this is actually what I said way back when, if you guys followed the channel back in 2019 and 2020, what I said for this cycle is that the purple one is attainable. Even going to the top of the purple band, is it should be attainable for Ethereum. I mean, it doesn't really seem like that big of a deal today, but when we were trading for a couple hundred dollars, the idea that Ethereum could go to, you know, $3,000 to $6,000 was, was a little bit absurd, <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, but here we are. And if you're curious where the purple band ranges from now, it is currently ranging from around 4,900 up to around 9,100. So, you know, if, if we see an, a price of Ether flirting with $10,000, you know, within the next 12 to 18 months, then we're probably getting a little too heated, okay? Now, again, the upper regression band will continue to increase if we sort of just draw it out like this. And let's say, as, as you guys know, I've, I've said many, many times in the past, I, I think that, you know, we should still see prices generally appreciating through through 2023, um, before we have some type of longer move to the downside. But this one is, I mean, even if you take this out to, say, August of 2023, you're still probably only looking at a, at a, at a upper limit here of, of, say, somewhere between fifteen dollars to $20,000. So I, I do think that Ethereum has the ability to get into the purple regression band, which it's already been in a, a number of times, but this is something we said back in 2019 as well, I do think it's somewhat unlikely that we would make it to, you know, to these regression bands up here. And if we do come into this one, it would probably be only just barely like we did, like we did over here. I also wanted to provide an update on, on the fractal that we followed. I, I, I've seen some, some questions about that. So we'll, we'll go ahead and provide an update, even though I, I wanted this video to mainly be about the regression stuff. You know, one of the things we followed with this fractal you know, are, are just the similarities. And, and there's various phases where it looks better than others. But one of the things that you can note is this fractal that we've, we've sort of been following for, for quite some time. And that's, you know, having this move to the upside followed by a secondary move to the upside. And then a third move to the upside followed by a slow depreciation in the price of Ethereum. And then potentially followed by, by liftoff as we head into um, April and, and May. So we'll see if this actually plays out. I, I know this is something we've spoken about many times in the past. So let's see if it plays out and, and we'll continue to follow along if and, if and when it does. If it were to play out, I, I would not imagine that it would actually keep pace with this fractal because again, the market capitalization was a lot lower. But you know, even if you, even if you sort of temper this one and, and say spread it out and say it does something like this, you could still be looking at, at you know higher prices in you know over the next say 12 to 18 months and, and if you get if you overlay the regression rainbow onto that and sort of speculate where that would put things you could like sort of extend this thing out and and say all right well maybe it could look something like that where it, it pops its head above the purple regression band or something before then ultimately coming down i should say that if if something like this were to play out where where Ethereum is able to you know get a, a, a nice sustained move higher, uh, where it really moves past ten thousand dollars over say the next like twelve to eighteen months or something, no one you know I, I would say that at that point we probably would be looking at, at some type of a longer move to the downside. Even though it's really not fun to to admit that kind of stuff, but like if something like this plays out, 
I would I would have to think that you know we would probably then see some type of longer move back down, uh, and then a, and then a longer consolidation phase followed by probably an eventual move back up to the upside. I just want people to to maintain some perspective on this market, recognize that the risks are there. I mean, there certainly are no guarantees that we move higher. We could certainly fall back into into this regression band that we've been in once upon a time. But you know, I mean, so far Ethereum has been doing a really good job of holding this lower regression band and, the, and the, the price has more or less just been slowly increasing um, in terms of the bottoms. So we'll see if we can continue to hold it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We also have the sale on the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. I'll see you next time. Bye.